If you guys have known me for a while, you know that something that I enjoy is brain exercises, especially challenging myself to be exposed to topics that I have never been very good at. One of those topics is history. I'm not very good at retaining that information. I keep it very basic. I don't go out of my way to make political associations in the present that may come from the past, anything like that. But I had this idea based on something that randomly came to my mind. And I know that it is something that now that I think about it, I guess it's a debate that has the potential of never being settled. So I'm thinking about creating some kind of mini series, again, in which I take something that happened politically that we don't seem to agree on whether it was a good decision or a bad decision. So today's topic is going to be the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And of course, as we might know, but I'm not going to assume that we all know, this is an event that took place during World War II. And I decided to look it up because there was some stuff that I honestly could not answer off the top of my head. The first thing that I couldn't answer because I sincerely could not remember this lesson in history class was why was it that Pearl Harbor was attacked in the first place? And from what I gather, back then, Japan had a very imperialistic mindset. They had like this quest that they wanted to embark on because they wanted resources. They want it to be like another superpower via sources of oil and other materials, just power, supplies. The U.S., of course, had plenty of those supplies and then they were also attacking other places that may be allies with the U.S., but the U.S. wasn't really aiding those allied folks because after... I guess World War One. we decided that we didn't want to be involved in any more conflict, at least for a while. I guess Japan looked at it as, hmm, if we start attacking now, we can make the US initiate negotiations. But it turns out that when you attack a fleet and there are a lot of casualties, like in the thousands, it also costs us some of our carriers and stuff. It doesn't matter how fatigued we may be from a recent conflict, we go and fight and we have resources. So it's strange to me that a small nation that's looking for resources, evidently you have limited resources, you're going to pick a fight with a ginormous being in a quest to steal the resources from that biggest being. See what I mean? Now, I'm not saying that the U.S. is completely innocent of this. Like, the way that we went about obtaining our resources are messed up. But let's just limit it to this time period, to this time frame. From what I understand, that attack on Pearl Harbor is what got us involved in World War II. The argument has been that when we bombed Japan, was that the right thing to do? The argument is, well, it saved American lives. And it was the way to show Japan how formidable we are and how strong we are, this and that. But then it comes up as, well, we dropped this bomb on innocent people, innocent civilians, children, women, elderly, just everybody, you know, all humans and men and stuff. Humanity got attacked. So now, presently, it's interesting to me that we can have this relationship to where we can be stationed in Japan and it doesn't seem like they're holding a grudge against us. But I'm not really in a position to say that because I really don't know the Japanese like that. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I just know that they have rebuilt 
those cities and they seem to be thriving culturally they made it a point to memorialize those spots and be like hey this is what happened educating the masses i totally agree with that from what i gathered and learned the united states has never apologized for that and a lot of japanese people seem to feel some type of way about that from the couple of things that I watched about this and I said to myself you know what that's true the USA doesn't really do a good job about coming forward and being like uh, yeah maybe perhaps we did something wrong like we definitely had a hand in some crimes and stuff but we want to maintain this image of the US can do no wrong, right? In my opinion, do I think that such force, such attack was justified? It's hard for me to take a position had I lived during that time because I'm feeling like if I found out that my folks in the Pacific suffered in any way, especially given that I come from a military family, let's say that I just so happened to live in the West and somehow my folks were more likely to be deployed out there and they got hurt or we lost them damn right i'm going to be upset and i'm probably going to want to seek justice or vengeance somehow but in an ideal world i would be able to directly confront those who are responsible or in this case our armed forces on my behalf would do that it's hard when our power will be attacking an area with the power that we have that simply doesn't stand a chance at all and i get the part of the image aspect of it like hey mess with us you're gonna find us but it's just difficult because there's that side of me that's like these folks attacked us in the same way that we have attacked other people innocent people in previous times we started this country very violently so who's to say that at some point we don't have to pay the price for that we're gonna have to pay for that somehow at some point but my mindset as a person in the 1940s would I be able to arrive at that conclusion or would I be too riled up from what's happening during those times what was education like during those times were we accepting of that, the way that our country started? How was that being taught? Also, me personally, as someone who's like multiracial, like what would it have looked like for me? Because there's a high possibility that with all the segregation going on, my family as I know it would not have even existed. And I can't help but wonder about that if I had been living in the Pacific, but with the traits that I know myself to have today. And another thing that makes it hard for me is that it's very easy for me now in modern days to sit here, make a judgment based on the present times and the information that I have present now. And the fact that with the in it, I'm able to hear accounts from the folks over there as opposed to when I was in school, I only had information to the US way of teaching about the conflict. I think that having an ambition to be an imperial level country is something that's not a positive thing because of the consequences it has, say the destruction of cultures, destruction of communities, all for what? to unite us under one flag but we don't necessarily have to agree with or share the values of that flag so there's a part of me that's like imperial japan unfortunately brought this on themselves because they started a conflict hoping to get a reaction out of us that would be more about negotiating how to stop the conflict but instead we decided to retaliate and declare war we became bloodthirsty had we decided not to do that what would that have looked like would it really have meant that the japanese would have gotten 
whatever it is that they wanted and we would have continued to live okay lives or who's to say that the Japanese because they're being imperial aren't going to behave the same way that the US and the British and the French and all these colonizing countries behaved. How would you have treated me as a citizen of the USA as you start invading us? Are you going to be kind to me? Are you going to be nice to me? Because it's easy to talk about Japan's victims as, okay, they're innocent. It's totally lamentable that they were victims in this and the sheer brutality of it. But at the same time, I'm like, your people would have been fine. But what about my people? What about me? That's what makes it hard for me to partake in debates and discussions like this because I want to evaluate it from every possible direction but I'm only limited to my present reality. It's not like I can go back in time and be like, well, now that I'm actually observing this happening live, like say pushing a button and playing back the live stream of those events in the 1940s, it's like, uh, you know, it, it it's hard. Ultimately, me personally, when I was in school, I think it's because of the way it was being taught. I always said that the attack was justified. But now that I'm grown and I actually understand the scope of the damage now, there's a part of me that's like, that was extreme. We could have fought it differently. But then the argument comes up about well, American lives were saved. And I'm like, American lives were saved? Okay, but what about Japanese lives? If we're supposed to be this country that upholds its values and we present ourselves like this country that fights for freedom and liberties and fairness and all that, protections of our rights, do those people don't have rights? Like, do the Japanese not have a right to live? So I think that the problem here is the thirst of politicians to embark in that behavior of imperialism. Why do you want to be imperialist? Why do you want to own so much? Why do you want to have so much? If your people have survived for so many years off whatever the land provided for you, why not be happy with that? So I'm not just criticizing the Japanese. This goes for everybody. This goes for like the British when they became ambitious, uh, the Italians, the, uh, you know, everybody, everybody ever who has been involved in imperialism. Just what made you decide that your proximity was just not good enough for you and you wanted to be more ambitious and greedy about the Earth's resources, all for power. That is the part that will never compute in my brain because I don't think as a politician. There's that part of me that's like, we are guilty just as much as they are guilty because you gotta be careful about what kinds of ambitions you're having. But now if I want to be responsible with my opinion about that, I have to find out what made Japan want to be imperialist in the first place. Was it because they were trying to protect themselves from being the next culture to fall to say the west they were defending their culture or preparing for the day that they may need to fight to defend their culture once again i want to say just one answer and be like yes it was wrong no it was justified but the more that i think about it and try to look at it objectively it's just hard because i can empathize with both sides I can empathize with my fellow Americans and what it meant for them to be attacked, but I can also empathize with the innocent lives that the Japanese lost. I'm not saying that folks who are in the military are like expendable or something because of the assumption of the risk with that profession. Unfortunately, being a member of the armed forces, it means that you run the risk more than likely to be lost in action. So an innocent person, I feel like it's not fair for them to suffer such a fate when they didn't even have a chance to even try to defend themselves. That's the part of war that I don't like. The 
collateral damage. Me, why should I be a victim of a war that I didn't decide to start? The American people, what did they really want? Do we have this mentality in the 1940s, kind of like we do in the present, which in the present, at least everybody in my personal circle and most of what I see people writing online, they say, I don't want to be at war. I don't want to be in conflict. Do the Japanese civilians also look and think like us? Look at this matter and think about it like us? I'm just a civilian minding my business, but these politicians are making decisions and using their power in ways that don't involve me and my opinion. Leave the Americans alone. And then the Americans are like, leave the Japanese alone. See what I mean? So I wish I could just create some massive poll and ask regular people, not the politicians, but regular people, what do you actually want? What are you looking for? Do you have the same ambition for resources like your representatives do? Ultimately, to this day, because I know of the brutality of imperial mindsets, I want to say that it wasn't justified, that level of aggression and the reason why I want to change my mind now from what I thought as a teen is because of what I just described about these were innocent people completely unarmed not a single fighting opportunity and I mean the way that they were gone these people were completely vaporized okay that's horrible and the survivors what it did to them physically and mentally this now created a generational problem. How bad was the damage on the USA? The actions of Japan, generationally, how did it affect us? Because now some of these folks who survived are passing on damage from those times. Let it be genetically, historically, and these people had to rebuild. What is it like for them to rebuild? What is it like for us to rebuild when we lose our stuff to natural disasters, for example? This is the stuff that people had to go through back then on their end, but multiplied by however many times we got to multiply that by. This served as a good exercise for me, but I feel like it's a very difficult thing to just completely settle. And maybe that's why to this day that debate continues. What do you think? What's your opinion? And how did you arrive at that opinion? Was it traveling? Was it meeting somebody? Was it reading something? How were you educated on this topic when you were in school? And if you wish to share, where did you go to school? Because for me, my district, it, it lacked some stuff. I'll leave it at that.